Hey everybody, welcome to Bill Sky the Database Guy. Third and last video on setting up your development environment and then we're going to start messing around with some programming. So this one, this video today is about setting up your Mac. I have a Mac OS 13 Ventura installed here in a VMware guest on my big Mac Pro and we're going to go ahead and start the install to get your development environment set up for MySQL and database programming. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go into the uh, Apple App Store and you want to do a search for Xcode. Now this is a brand new Mac install. I've got nothing else installed here. My resolution is a little bit low, but that's okay. So I'm just going to type Xcode and go ahead and click the get, click the install let it install. This will install all the development tools that you need. I think there might be one other thing we need to get, but we'll do that after the install. Get that install going, and when you're done, come on back to the video. Now, while my Xcode is downloading and installing, I'm going to go ahead and download a few other things that we need. There is a link in the description of this video on downloading the Xcode command line tools go ahead and click on that download that file I've put it up on my Dropbox um, it's it came directly from Apple so there's nothing noxious in it so go ahead and download that double click on the DMG file and install that it's going to take a few minutes but what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to do command line development on your Mac which is very very similar to Linux so good idea to do that the next thing we're going to do is we're going to also we're going to next install the MySQL. So I'm going to type in HTTPS dev.mysql.com downloads and I'll put all these links in the description of this video and what you want to do is you want to find your MySQL community server so click on that. You want to make sure you click on the correct Mac OS version if you have a current older Mac you want to do the x86-64 if you've got an M1 or M2 Mac a newer one you want to click on the Mac OS 13 now be aware I do have a Mac OS uh, I actually I have a Mac M1 Mac Mac mini but I haven't done any of the testing on this a lot of it should be the same it shouldn't really matter because you're not dealing with a summer language you're dealing with C++ but this is all assuming that MySQL has set up all the ARM and it kind of looks like it did. So I'm going to do the x86-64 and then I'm going to click on the DMG archive and then just say no thanks, just start my download. And then go ahead and allow downloads to occur from that. All right, now we're not going to down we're not going to install that yet. Let's go ahead and install the other components or download the other components because we're still waiting for Xcode. So I'm going to click back a few times and then I'm going to click on the MySQL Workbench. I'm going to select the appropriate Mac OS version. I'm going to click on the DMG archive. No thanks, just start my download. The next thing I want to do is I want to download the MySQL shell. So I'm going to go back a couple more times, go over to MySQL shell. Again, make sure you pick the correct version. They're not always in the same order, so be careful. And then download the DMG archive. And then the last thing we want to do is we also want to download the C++ connector and the Java connector. So here's my connector C++. I'm going to click on that. Again, make sure you click on the correct OS version. Download. No thanks. Okay, and then let's do the connector J. Now you don't need to download the, oh, when you download the connector J, pick the platform independent and then click the, which one do we want to do? Click the zip file, a little bit bigger than the tar file, but that's okay. Now we're not going to have to do anything with the Python connector because we can install that from pip. You'll see that in just a moment. And let's see how things are doing with the download. All right, great. So I think that's everything we need to download. Oh, nope, there's one other one. Uh, let's go ahead while we're waiting for Xcode to install. Let's go ahead and download 
the sample database. So I'm going to go to HTTPS dev.mysql.com doc employee en and I'm going to go to installation I'm going to click on the employee DB on github I'm going to click on code download zip go ahead and let that download as well so let's see if there's anything else that we need to install I don't think there are let's double check I'm looking at my notes. I take notes about it with, with everything. That's how I look so smart. Uh oh. Okay, so we'll go ahead and install Python and we'll install the Python connector once Xcode is done installing. Let's make sure. Okay, everything looks good. So when your Xcode is, is done installing, come back to this video and we'll really get going. Okay, once Xcode is installed, you don't want to install all of the other tools yet. You want to actually start up Xcode. So go ahead and get it started up. It's going to install some other things, and then I'll show you how to install all the other tools, and then you'll be able to actually start running database programs on your Mac. So go ahead and get that started. Let's 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 watch it. It's going to churn for a little while. It's also going to install some other things. You have to agree to the license. Now, if you want to do watch OS apps or TV OS apps, go ahead and click on those and stay in, stay, say install. It is going to take another seven gigabytes this time downloads. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and click install. It's going to install additional components, but you want to get Xcode up and running, ready to start developing before you actually install all the other tools. Let that go ahead and finish. Now, if it looks like Xcode finished doing something, you're going to want to try to click on it again. So I'm going to go to Applications, click on Xcode again, see if it'll start up. Okay, so uh, it says what's new in Xcode. I'm just going to click Continue. And when you get this window, that means that you're all ready to go. So Xcode is ready. So I'm going to close Xcode at this point. And then I'm going to go to my Downloads folder. And in my Downloads folder, I have a little folder called installed and when I get things installed I'm going to drag them into there and that way um, I don't forget what I did and, and I know what I when I finish. So I downloaded the command line tools for Xcode. So go ahead and double click on that and then double click on the package file. Say continue, continue, agree, install, type your password and let it go ahead and finish installing and then restart the video when you're ready to go. Now while this is installing there is one thing I forgot to tell you about installing and that's you have to install Java because in this course we're going to do Python, Java, C, C++ as well as PHP but I forgot to tell you about this but I, it will be in the notes in the description of this video so everything should be there so I'm just going to go ahead and go to the Java Technologies downloads. Um, I like this, the version 17 of Java, and the reason is it's more stable. It's not brand new. Most of the tools will work with it. And I'm going to come down here and go to Mac OS. So I clicked on JDK 17 Mac OS, and I'm interested in the X64 uh, DMG installer. So I'm going to click on that, go ahead and let that download. And I believe that's it. So that should be all the downloads that we have to do. So let's go ahead and quit Safari or any browser you're using. We'll go ahead and let this continue to and finish up installing and then we'll go ahead and work on all of the other tools that we have to install. Okay, once the uh, command line tools for Xcode are done installing. I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to eject the DMG 
drive that was opened, and I'm going to go ahead and drag that command line into the installed folders. So I'm done with that now. All right, so let's next do the MySQL 8.1 in this case. Go ahead and install the MySQL community server. Double click on the package file. Allow it. Continue, continue, agree. It's gonna probably ask for your password again. Now it is going to install a bunch of files, but then it's gonna have a little configuration. This I have to say is the easiest SQL. Um, I've ever, my SQL installation that I've ever seen is the one on Mac. So go ahead and click next. Oh, looks like it's asking for some permission. Um, I'm just gonna leave everything default. Not, why, not sure why that brought that up. I'm gonna click next. Now it asks for a password. Again, this is just a work computer. It's not gonna be a real server, so I just put in password, the word password, finish. It asked me for my system password. I typed that in. It's setting things up and set, it's setting up all its control databases, its user, and then go ahead and close, keep. I like to keep all this stuff just in case I might use it again. So let's eject it. And I'll go ahead now and move that. I'm having a little bit of mouse problems here because this is on a VMware guest. Okay. All right. Um, the next thing you can do is you can install the shell. So go ahead and double click on that DMG file and then double click on the package. Continue, continue. Agree. Your your Mac password. Now, what the shell is is it's it is a command line environment that allows you to execute the newest MySQL shell commands. All right. What's that? Once that's done, go ahead and close that. I'm now done with the shell, so I'm going to drag that up to my installed folder. All right, let's now do the workbench. Now the workbench is going to be your best friend. And the workbench install is a little bit different. All you do is drag that to your applications link. When that's done, go ahead and close that window. And let's drag that up to the installed. All right, um, let's go ahead and install the C++ connector. Don't forget to eject your other ones. Type your password. Now you don't want to install these until Xcode is fully installed because Xcode installs the C and C++ compiler. All right, we're done with that one. We'll put that into the installed folder. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the JDK, the Java Java Development Kit. So I'm gonna double click on that, double click on it, the package file. Continue, install my password. Doesn't take very long. Yeah, this, there we go. Okay. Now the MySQL connector J, that is, that's an interesting install because you don't actually 
there's not actually an install program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on Finder and say New Finder Window. I'm going to go to my Documents folder and I'm just going to drag it into there. And I'm going to hold down my Alt key so it drags a copy of it in. And we'll see how to set all that up. I'm going to go ahead and copy that into the installed folder. All right, now, now we have to install Python. Now, the way that you install Python is kind of interesting. I'm going to go to my Applications folder, and I'm going to go to Utilities, and I'm going to go to Terminal. Now, to install Python, you simply say Python 3 on your terminal, and Xcode will actually download Python 3, get it all installed. You don't have to download anything from python.org. And there we go. So now you have Python installed. Now to get the Python, to get the Python MySQL connector installed, you just have to issue a command from the terminal. So what we're going to do is we're going to cancel, we're going to exit out of this. So I'm going to type quit, open and close parentheses, and then I'm going to type python 3-m pip install two dashes, upgrade pip, make sure pip is upgraded. Now pip is the Python installation program, so it allows you to install stuff. So now let's install the MySQL, so I'm going to say pip3 install MySQL connector Python. It's going to install some things. Alright, great. Now one way that you can check to see if the Python connector is working is type Python 3 type import mysql.connector and if you just get the three greater than signs you're hooked up alright so we're gonna exit out of that so it looks like that everything is pretty much installed. Let me just double check all of my notes. We installed the Python connector. We dragged and dropped the Java into our documents folder. We went ahead and install, installed Xcode. We installed the MySQL. Now there are a couple other things that we have to do. We're going to have to change the path. So if I type MySQL it says I don't know what that is. So to actually install or to actually make MySQL available on the command line I'm going to do this strange little command and let me copy and paste it. Again I will put it into the description notes and what this is going to do is this is going to set up the path into the ZSHRC file and what the path is is that the path is the environment variable in the operating system that tells the environment in the operating system where all of the executable programs are located so what that did was it just copied it into the script file that is loaded every time you load a terminal I'm gonna go ahead and say dot ZSHRC, that's going to execute it. Now if I type MySQL, it's going to find it. If I want to, now every time I log out and log back in, every time I reboot my Mac, this will all take effect. So now I'm going to type MySQL-user root-p, type in the password that I did for MySQL, which was just the word password. I'm actually logged into MySQL now. I'm going to type show databases, and we can see our four databases. All right, great. So I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna exit out. Now the next thing, the last thing we want to do is we want to install this test database. So the way I'm gonna do that from the terminal is I'm going to change directory squiggly downloads. I'm gonna ls. I'm gonna say yep. I want to. I want the terminal to be able to allow it. And there's my test DB master folder. So I'm going to change directory to test DB master. 
ls, and I'm going to say mysql dash user root dash p dash t less than sign employees dot sql. Type in my mysql password, and what this is doing is it's installing, it's creating the database called employees. It's pulling, it's creating all the tables, all the structure of the database. And then it's loading the actual data into the database. Now, where did this file come from? It was an exported or it was a dumped file from a backup database that someone created at Oracle. It's a great little test database that we're going to be using and that you can use. So while that is working, the other thing that we're going to do is right after this is done, we're going to bring up the MySQL Workbench. So to do that, I'm going to go to my Applications folder, and I'm going to scroll down to MySQL Workbench, click on that. Now, we're not going to connect yet to the local server because that database, oh, that database just finished. All right, so once that database is finished, you can close your terminal. The first time you start SQL, MySQL Workbench, it's going to ask you, do you want to open it? Yep, I want to open it. Now I'm going to click on the local instance. It's going to ask me for my root password for MySQL. Type that in. Um, I'm going to say connect anyway. Now I'm going to don't show this message again. And I'm going to click up here on schemas. And there's my employees table. I'm going to expand that. I'm going to expand tables. Uh, let's take a look at departments. So I'm going to right click on departments. I'm going to say select rows limit 1000. And you can see that our SQL server is up and running. Here's our query. Here's all the departments in the department table. If I want to see something a little bit more impressive, I right click on the employees. And you can see there's just thousands of employees in this database. Um, if I want to limit the number of employees, I can change the query to limit 10. Press the execute button and we can only see the first 10 employees. So if you're able to get all this going, then you're all set. And we, we tested the Python. We haven't tested the Java, but we'll do that in our very first Java project, which I believe the very next video is going to be how to actually connect your application in C++, then Python, then Java. So we're gonna do our first projects in the next videos. Everything you need to set up on your Mac Hope to see you the next video.